Well, hello everyone. Welcome to Monday's edition of Take 5. Hey, I hope you had a great weekend. Most importantly, I hope you had a great Mother's Day yesterday. We just had an awesome time in the house of the Lord and uh, we had a great time of worship and getting in the Word. And then we took some time there at the end of the service to honor our mothers and gave them a little gift and then and then took time to pray for them. Um, mothers uh, deal with a whole lot of things and there were mothers in our church yesterday. And then when you think about those all over the world, they had all kinds of things going on in their life. Uh, you know, some were dealing with financial issues, some were dealing with physical and some emotional, some were dealing with relational issues, maybe even with their children, uh, others dealing with grief and things like that. And so we just took the time to pray for our mothers yesterday. Uh, and we should always do that. Don't just do it one time a year. We should always take the time to pray for that elite group of godly ladies uh, because I don't know where the church would be if it weren't for mothers. And so we celebrated them yesterday. And hey, if nobody told you, I hope you had a great Mother's Day yesterday. Now, and we're talking about this thing, renewing the mind, because that's where we deal with this thing we call the sin nature. It's a battle that goes on in our mind. And every believer deals with that. I don't care who you are. I don't care how long you've been saved. If you just got saved today or you've been saved for 50 years, every believer has to deal with that sin nature. And we have to do it God's way. We can't do it our way. We can't do it the, you know, the way the church has, has thought for years that we dealt with sin. You know, you don't do that. You have to deal with it God's way. And that is number one, recognize that Jesus paid the penalty for your sin. And number two, recognize that his resurrection from the tomb broke the power, broke the back of sin and made it possible for you and I to live in victory over it to this extent that Paul said in Romans chapter six, that sin will not have dominion over us. So we do not have to yield ourselves to it. I want to read uh, from Romans chapter seven uh, and uh, chapter eight, a few verses. I may skip around a little bit for sake of time today. Here's what he said. Paul said this. Now I have discovered this principle of life that when I want to do what is right, I inevitably do what is wrong. I love God's law with all my heart, but there is another power within me that is at war with my mind. That's where it takes place at, right there. This power makes me a slave to the sin that is still within me. Oh, what a miserable person I am. Who will free me from this life that is dominated by sin and death? Notice what he said. Oh, what a miserable person I am. I, you know, if you've, if you've lived, if you'll be honest with yourself, you can understand what that's like to be saved, to know that you are genuinely saved, but, but then have those struggles with sin, have those thoughts in your mind that torment your mind that come from that sin nature. You know what that is like as good as I do and every other person. And, and at some point we've got to begin to make progress and move forward in the direction that God intends us to so we can live in the victory uh, that he's provided for that. He tells us in chapter 8 that there's no condemnation to those that are in Christ that don't walk after the flesh, but walk after the spirit. In other words, he's telling us there, uh, even though we're having those things and we have that genuine struggle, we don't need to be condemned. We don't need to feel guilty because we know our sins are covered by Jesus Christ. Now, that is not a license to sin. That does not mean that we can just go out here freely, do whatever we want to. He's talking to a group of people who are born again, but they are genuinely having that struggle in their mind. So he tells us this in Romans 8, verse 5 and 6. Those who are dominated by the sinful nature, think about sinful things. Those who are controlled by the Holy Spirit, think about things that please the Spirit. So letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death, but letting the Spirit control your mind leads to life and peace. Now, there was a time in my life, I don't have to, I don't mind telling you uh, that, uh, and it's been years ago, many years ago, that when I read that, I thought he was talking about two different people. I thought he was talking about, you know, those that are dominated by the sin nature, that's, that's those that are 
not saved. And those that are controlled by the Holy Spirit, that's those that are saved. You know, that's the opposite of that. And the fact is, it's not two different people. It's the same person. He's talking to believers. Believers can absolutely be dominated by that sin nature, and most are. And before we get through this week, if you'll hang out with me, don't turn me off right now and say, oh, no, there's no way. If, if you'll hang out with me, you'll find out it is a fact that there are born-again believers that can be dominated by that sin nature. I'll give you a real quick example. If, if you have ever given in to sin, if you've ever given in to temptation as a believer and, and you knew the Holy Spirit was telling you don't do that or you knew that you had read the word it says don't do that and if you have ever given in to it and done it anyway, then at that moment you were dominated by sin. That, that's, that's what that means. So he tells us here that if we're dominated by the sinful nature, that's because that's where our focus is. We're thinking on those terms. We're thinking about those things. But if we're controlled by the Holy Spirit, then our thinking is different. We're thinking about things that please God. We're following the lines of the word. And so letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death. But here's what we're after. Letting the spirit control your mind leads to life and peace. That's what we want. I don't want to be saved and bound. I don't want to be saved and miserable. I don't want to be saved and addicted. I don't want to be saved and habitually caught up in sin. I don't want to be that. I want to be saved and free and know what it is to, to have that freedom where Jesus said, he that the sun sets free is free indeed. That's what I absolutely want to know. I want to know what it is to be saved and to be free and to walk in that kind of peace. Now, everything that we've read points to the mind. That's the issue. There's the problem. So last week we read Romans 12, 2 that said, don't be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Now, when you say that, don't be conformed to the world, that means don't take the image of, and for years uh, in the church, and especially if you were raised like I was, you, you thought worldliness was the way you look, the way you dress whether or not you had a TV in the house or you played sports or, you know, you did certain things like that. We called all that worldliness. Um, the fact is what he's referring to there is if we think like, act like, respond like the world would respond. And when he says the world, he's talking about people without Christ, people without the Holy Spirit living in them. And so we've done that for years because he, here's the thing, you'll find that worldly people deal with stress and anxiety and worry and doubt and unbelief and low self-esteem and all of that type of stuff. So do believers. So when we think along those lines and, and when we respond like that and when we deal with doubt and unbelief and negativity and low self-esteem and all of that stuff and sin, let's don't forget that, when we deal with all of that, then that's what we're doing. We're conforming to the world. We're acting like the world. And he said, we do not need to act like the world. We need to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. So this week, we're going to talk more about this thing called the renewal of the mind. We're going to learn just how powerful the mind can be. And we are going to see that we can walk in the victory that Jesus provided for us at Calvary and outside that empty tomb. Well, hey, I've got to get out of here. It's been good being with you today. I look forward to being with you tomorrow on Tuesday's edition of Take 5. Till then, God bless you. Have a great day. Hey, trust the Lord, friend. He will never fail you.